Hey folks, and welcome to Greg's Golf Shack. This is episode two of my quest for better golf. This is a personal vlog to kind of document my journey of improving my golf game and swing and also improve my overall fitness and flexibility. In episode one, I shared some of the physical challenges I have that have impacted my golf swing over the past couple of years. And I outlined some of the things I wanna work with in my golf swing, as well as uh, some of the fitness goals I'd like to achieve. So today we're two weeks in, and I'd like to share with you what I've been doing over the past two weeks to start working on that golf swing and start improving my fitness. So I guess the first thing I'll report is that the first two weeks was really tough, but also so rewarding to get through. It's been a busy schedule. And if I hadn't posted episode one saying, this is what I wanna do and I wanna share it publicly, uh, I probably would have lost that motivation. So I didn't feel obligated to do it, by sharing it with you, it kept me motivated uh, to keep pushing through. So let's dive into the swing first. And one of the things I wanted to work on was flexibility. So besides general stretching and yoga and things that were part of my fitness routine, I did focus quite a bit on stretching uh, for rotational aspects of my golf swing. So you can see here, even when I was in the gym, I would grab the bands over the shoulder to help stretch me out for a top of the backswing position and also in that final follow through position as well. I like to sit on a chair, try to feel like I'm getting some separation between my upper and lower body with some stretches. And I also grabbed a pole and really kind of stretched out my shoulders and my chest to help influence a nice comfortable turn throughout the entire swing. And to feel like I can really get that big turn with my back to the target and chest to the target. Now for the golf swing itself, I wanted to start with baby steps. Now the issues where I wanted to have better rotation, a slower back swing, a lot less excessive wrist hinge, especially at the top. And I wanted to have some better weight transfer into my trail side in the backswing. So backswing was really the key of this first you know, week, maybe even the full two weeks. So in these clips, what I did was work my way through the bag doing these small little partial swings. They're like 40 yard chips in my mind. And I just focused on a nice controlled backswing with rotation, tried to minimize the wrist hinge just by feel, but the priority was backswing. And I worked my way through pitching wedge, seven iron. I went to the four hybrid. I did these small little rotational drills with a three wood. I even teed it up with the driver and hit some small little rotational shots with the driver. I also hit some really small little shots with the lob wedge as well. Now I noticed I was getting a little quick still with the takeaway. So I made an effort to really slow down and have really controlled slow hits with the seven iron, with my four hybrid, and also a really slow one with the driver. Now this was a real challenge to do these very limited rotational drills and not give in to wanting to do full swings, especially it was master's week. So I was watching it. I can't say I didn't sneak in a couple of golf shots when I was watching the masters, but I really did focus on this and that was a real challenge, but it felt good. Now, while the focus of this miniature backswing drill was to help develop a smoother takeaway, good body rotation, and good weight transfer into my trail side, I wanted to be able to develop that feeling, ingrain that feeling of what that feels like without developing any new bad habits. So because there's not a lot of weight transfer through the swing or momentum in the swing, I did notice it was very easy in these backswing drills to kind of hang back. So to avoid that from happening, every so often I would perform the walkthrough drill, just to ensure with these small swings that I'm still getting to the lead side and I can develop that feeling of what it is to move through impact and into a follow through position. The other element I noticed before really diving into wrist angles was because I do have some overactive wrists, I could still get quite a bit of wrist hinge in these small little swings. And it was so easy to cast the club. It really exposed casting of the club. That would cause, even with these small swings, fat shots because the wrists are really throwing the club down. And if I was trying to avoid those fat shots, I could notice that sometimes the hip 
would kind of slide. I'd rotate back, but all that focus on the backswing kind of lets the rest of this slide. So I was sort of sliding that hip out, which minimizes the rotation through impact and into the follow through. So to counter that, after a session of swings, I would pull out an impact bag and just lightly get into that impact position, feel that connection with the impact bag and feel that my body is getting sort of stacked into that lead side and my lead hip is starting to release at that position. That really helped avoid this sliding movement and ensure that my body is moving in a nice rotational sequence, even for such small little minor swings. So for that first week, I didn't even really worry about where the ball was going. I didn't even really consider contact that much. I really wanted to focus on just that rotational backswing. And, you know, as I realized issues with casting were coming in where I pulled out that impact bag, I wanted to know what the wrists were doing, even for those little small swings. So then I pulled out the hack motion. Now I did a little first impressions video of the hack motion. I'll put a card up top and a link down below. And I was using its club face control feature to help tell me if my wrist was extended or flexed. Now my history is I have a very extended wrist, so I wanted to try to get it within an acceptable range. So you can see what I worked on here. This is an eight iron, for example. And at first I was getting this very extended wrist at impact because I always have had such an extended wrist. I had to cast the club so much. So now that the wrist was getting to a good position, I was casting at an impact. So I used this device to help guide me and get a better impact position. So I had a good top and impact position with the iron. I also pulled out a four hybrid and uh, worked on that too. Started getting some good top positions, good impact positions, and it just felt really good. It was confirming that what I was working on was actually contributing to the golf swing. Now I practiced that with clubs throughout the bag too. You can see for the second week, I still wasn't hitting full shots. Now at this point in my practice, I was pretty comfortable with the backswing rotational drills I was doing. And I was also pretty confident about where my wrists were because of the data that the hack motion was giving me. And now I started wondering, where is this ball going? This is what's gonna tell me a little bit more about what my contact is like with these small little shots. So I fired up the SkyTrack and worked on some of these small rotational shots just going down the driving range. And for some of these clubs, the irons especially, they were going pretty good. I was applying everything I'd been practicing and I was getting some really good results. Now, again, I'm not hitting it far. I'm not too worried. I'm not trying to control where it's going. I'm just seeing where it's going. When I pulled out the four hybrid, I was pushing them a little bit. It was a little harder to close that face. I was still having a bit of a cast and different things going on. So I pulled out the hack motion again, just to double check and see where my wrists were with that four hybrid. And then they started dialing in. I was able to figure out that I'm a little bit too extended. Let's get a little bit more flexed at that impact position. Let's go back and practice. And they started going down the middle. So it's really nice to have that tool to just kind of check. And it's amazing to see, even with these small little shots, how easy something can go offline. So I was feeling really good about the practice up to that point. And I'm looking forward to start hitting bigger and longer shots and see if I can translate what I'd been practicing to a bigger swing. Now, from a fitness perspective, I worked out at least five times a week uh, and offset some days off with just some stretching and yoga. Uh, it felt good, but I didn't do a lot of heavy weight. Some of you will look at this and say, I'm not doing a lot of weight or maybe my form is bad. That's okay. For me, it's a success. So uh, I like where it's going and I expect it to improve. Maybe I'll increase weight. I don't wanna be Thor holding a golf club. I just wanna be fit and healthy, flexible, solid. So no matter what I worked out on the day, I always started with cardio and stretching just to get warmed up. Day one was chest and shoulders. Normally I'd offset those reps with some abs, but I'd done core the day before. Um, next, I followed that up with a day of jump training. This was good cardio, but also kind of a good leg workout as well. Day three was uh, back and biceps. I thought this was a good combination. And I offset those repetitions with uh, sets of rowing. 
Uh, then I needed a day off. <laughs> I was pretty sore at this point. After that, day uh, five, I guess you could say, was legs and triceps. And I offset those sets with uh, some ab work just to throw something else in the mix there. And then I did a little bit of a kickbox cardio, just some punching and kicking. Boy, this got the blood flowing and the sweat flowing. It really felt good. Uh, and the next day was a nice day off just to stretch and rest. Now you're just seeing clips, uh, examples of some of the exercises I did. I did a lot of full sets of various exercises and at least a couple of reps of those sets. And before we get into week two of my fitness, I was able to schedule an appointment with my chiropractor. This is Dr. Douglas White of Coastal Chiropractic. Uh, he's great. I mean, I love working with Doug. He's kind of my go-to guy for anything physical. Every time I go in there, I come out feeling like a million bucks. So he has various exercises he works on with me, uh, certain reasons that he does it. These are just uh, some quick clips, some random clips of what we're working on. He knows I've been working out, so he stretched me out a little bit as well, but also addressed some of my key issues with my herniated discs, the elevated first rib. He helped decompress some of those things. We are definitely going to be talking to Doug in a future video. Uh, he'd love to be able to explain why we're doing these things. A lot of golfers go in to see him, so uh, we'll be talking to Doug again soon. But boy, I felt great coming out of that appointment. In week two, every exercise started with some stretching, some cardio. Uh, day one of that week was chest and back. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. So uh, good workout between those two exercises. I offset it with rowing just to keep the back alive. Day two that week was shoulders and arms. So shoulders, biceps, and triceps alternating between those for different sets. And I offset those sets with some ab work. Day three was a little bit more jump training and a little cardio stuff just to keep the heart rate elevated, burn some fat. I took a rest after that day. I needed some uh, a break. I followed that up with a leg workout, just focusing on legs, different exercises. Uh, I didn't go too hard out on it because my legs were sore from the jump training, but felt like a good workout. And I offset the leg workout with a little bit of rowing. And the next day I just focused on abs, lots of sit-ups, a lot of floor work and twists and different things. Just an effort to try and turn this one pack into a six pack. And the final day is just going to be some stretching and yoga. I'm going to do that this evening after I'm done recording. And uh, the fitness just feels great. Uh, if we look at a before and after, I mean, I didn't expect there to be much difference, but boy, I feel a lot better. It's only been two weeks. I'm not looking at the scale at all. I don't want that to influence what I'm doing. I feel motivated with what I'm working on that I'm gonna stick to it. I'll look at the scale at the end of this whole thing. So there you have it. That's been the past two weeks of the golf practice and the fitness routines. I do feel like it's been working well. I'm excited for where this was going. Um, again, I'm motivated to keep going. There's no way I'm just gonna quit and let this fizzle. Uh, I'm excited by the progress so far. Over the next two weeks, I'm gonna be doing some of the same routine, but building up a bigger swing, maybe try to get more into that full swing and then break down the full swing analysis a little bit more and work on some of the details. So we'll see where week three and four go. I don't want to really lay out a bunch of goals yet. I'll just report on what I kind of came up with uh, in two weeks when I post that video. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that my progress is either inspirational to you or informative uh, if you want to try and do something similar. Thanks for watching. Please like, uh, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time on Greg's Golf Shack.